Hi, and welcome to the New Horizons Design Sewing Channel, your place for all things sewing. Today I'm going to share with you a few tips and tricks to get the most out of your serger. These are some things that people have asked me to share with them in the past to help them really make their garments look more professional. If you don't have a serger, it's a great machine to have, especially if you're sewing with a lot of knit fabrics. Don't forget to check out my previous video on how to thread your serger and make sure that your tensions are adjusted correctly. So today I'm going to share with you a few things. The first thing I'm going to share with you today is how to get your neck bands in the round looking just right. It's hard when you're serging a neck band because you're serging it in the round, meaning that there's not a start and a finish to your seam. So it can be difficult to make sure that it matches up properly. So here's some ideas that can help you if you're struggling. First, always press your neck bands to make sure that they're perfectly folded in half. Next, on the back center seam is where you're gonna start surging and stop surging. So it can be helpful to go ahead and mark your seam allowance there. Seam allowance for all of New Horizons Designs pattern is 3 eighths of an inch. So go ahead and mark at 3 eighths of an inch on the back of your neck band. Make sure you're using a fabric pen or pencil. So now I always attach my neck bands and cuffs and things like that with my garment inside out. Match your neck band to the right side of your fabric all the way around. Now here's our mark that we made on the previous step. So now when we go to serge we're going to start not doing the full seam allowance. I like to start at the center back, of my garment. So now we start surging kind of at an angle and we're not gonna match up with that line just right. So go ahead and surge around your neck band. After you get started, you'll be doing your seam allowance. And it's easier with your neck band on top and your shirt below to see what you're doing because you can make sure that your neck band's always perfectly parallel with your presser foot. Now when we get back around, we'll see our mark, and you want to make sure that your stitches line up with that mark. See how we started a little bit off at an angle, but we want to make sure we line up our stitches just right. I make sure that my left needle goes straight across that mark, and then with your needles up, lift your presser foot. Move your project out of the way. And then you can serge your tail. And that way, we left off perfectly round. Trim your stitches and tuck that tail in. So once again, we start off our project. We make sure we line up right exactly with our seam allowance at the end. Lift your presser foot and move the project out of the way to finish off. And now we have a perfect neck band without any weird wobbly bits in the back that go off. Next up, another thing that we can struggle with on our serger is making really tiny cuffs, especially if you sew a lot of baby items or doll clothes or things like that for smaller people. Sometimes these cuffs can be so itty bitty and it's very intimidating to try and so that on a serger because the foot of a serger is a very long foot. So once again, always make sure your garment is inside out and tuck your cuff inside the garment to stretch it to fit. Next, you'll wanna try and nest those seams. What that means is you'll push your cuff seams one direction and your garment seam the other direction and then match that joint up. So that one seam allowance is going one direction and the other seam allowance is going the other direction. Another trick to reduce that bulk there is to sew the cuff itself with your sewing machine because it's not going to be seen anyway. And that way it's a little less bulky there. So now we've matched the joints with each other by nesting our seams and we stretch our cuff to fit. Now here's the tricky part. Now we've got to get this inside of our machine with this huge foot in the way. 
So I usually don't even use clips or pens or anything for this when it's a really tiny project. I'll try and stretch it out a little. Once again, we start off the project at an angle. We're gonna search. Now, we always are gonna have the cuff going around the presser foot as we sew. That's the trick to make it a little bit easier to do. Just kind of move your project out of the way and concentrate on just the part you're sewing and don't really worry so much about what the rest of it looks like in the machine. The whole time, your cuff will be wrapped around your serger foot. Once again, when we get to the end, we make sure we match up our stitches just perfectly. Then we're gonna lift our foot, move your project out of the way, make sure your needles are up for this step. Now serge off the project itself and snip your seams. And now we've sewn that very, very tiny cuff onto my make-believe sleeve here. If it's any smaller than this, I'd probably sew the cuff in the flat and then serge the seam at the end. Next up, another technique you can do on your serger is to do a gathering stitch. I usually don't use my serger for gathering stitches, but if you have to gather something and you only have to gather a little bit of it, or it doesn't have to be gathered to a very specific length, this is a fun technique to do. So first, you're gonna turn your stitch length all the way up, whatever that length is. Then you're gonna tighten your needles. My top two knobs are my needle tensions. You might have to play around with this a little bit, but the higher the tension and the longer the stitch length, the more it'll gather. Then you'll turn your differential up as high as it goes. Now when we run it through the serger, you'll see it kind of bunching as you go. The lighter weight your fabric, the more it'll gather for you. Don't forget to turn everything back how you had it. You can play around with it, always use a test piece, but you might be able to do even higher tensions and get tighter gathers, um, but always do a test piece on your project first, but that's a fun, easy way to do some gathering stitch. Next, one technique that can be really useful on your serger is to do a rolled hem. Rolled hems are really great when you're trying to hem a lightweight woven fabric, or if you're trying to hem a ruffle or a flounce. For example, on the cascade blouse, there's uh, flounces um, on the bodice. could finish the rolled hem with a contrast stitch. Um, you could also, on the boardwalk dress, there's a long flounce option for the dress itself. And a rolled hem is a great way to be able to finish that edge and make it look really professional without having to spend hours pressing and doing a hem otherwise. So rolled hems are really easy on um, your serger. Don't forget to check your manual because your serger might be slightly different than mine. But the basic technique is, you're going to remove your left hand needle. As well as your left hand thread. So we are only using a three thread rolled hem. So we'll have our right hand needle in. We still have our two loopers. The looper thread is the color that you'll have of the rolled hem. You won't really see much of the needle, but if you're trying to do a contrast rolled hem, I suggest making all of them match. Next, there's a selector switch on all machines for the stitch finger. The stitch finger is what spreads out the stitches on your serger. My selector stitch is right here, so you're gonna turn the stitch finger off because we don't want to stretch those out. The next step is to make your stitch length really short because we want those rolled hem stitches to be as close together as possible. We're also gonna probably have to tighten our loopers a little bit. But other than that, that should be all the major adjustments you make. We'll adjust your differential based on what fabric you're using. But in general, I usually use rolled hems for lightweight woven fabrics. So my differential needs to be a little bit higher than N for those. So now you'll cut off your seam allowance as you go. This is a very short stitch, so it goes through the machine very slowly. And there's our finished rolled hem. So I have a contrast gray rolled hem. It's a fun, easy way to hem things, especially if you don't have a cover stitch machine or don't wanna break out a twin needle. Another thing you can do with that rolled hem 
is to do a lettuce edge. This could be really cute for little girl garments to have like a lettuce edge hem. Um, it makes like kind of a roughly feel to it. In order to do that, we're gonna turn our differential all the way down. So when we turn the differential down, what it does is it pushes the fabric through at different speeds on the upper and lower, and it'll make a little roughly sort of edge to your garment. So there we go. So there's some tips and tricks that you can try on your serger and some ways to make sure your finished garments look as best as they can. Thank you. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos. Mm -hmm.